homicide and heart disease? Probably diabetes or something like that, or, or um, um, hypertension. Police think they've solved the homicides of two Brown Deer brothers. Six months later, they've arrested someone. Investigators relied on fault on the phone rather of the defendant jason calvey joins us now with how police say they use technology to pin the crime on a 19 year old milwaukee man yeah when you connect to the internet or a cell phone tower or phone companies and apps keep that information now the criminal complaint says police reviewed the defendant's phone records data from instagram and other apps as well as iphone messages brown deer police say it shows the defendant was at the scene of the crime six months ago two brothers were shot and killed both at their Brown Deer home. Both were 18 years old. On September 1st, family found a Marion Brown dead in his bed. Hours later, police searched the scene and found Brown's brother, Charles Robinson, in a car, also killed. Now prosecutors charge a 19-year-old Milwaukee man with the homicides. Can you state your name for the record? Joseph Tucker. The new criminal complaint relies on technology. It says Tucker's cell phone was used in the cell tower just 1,700 feet from the crime scene until 2.30 in the morning, the day of the shootings. The complaint includes a screenshot of a lift request at 2.38 in the morning looking for a pickup at the homicide scene. At 4.40 in the morning, the complaint says the phone was connected to the Internet through the victim's home. Police say that's backed up by FaceTime, iCloud, and iMessage logs. The complaint says the mother of the victims heard a pop around 5 to 6 in the morning. Around that time, the complaint says Tucker was involved in stealing the family's Jeep. And it adds that surveillance video shows Tucker and an unnamed person abandoned the SUV at 5.45 that morning. Pro damn, Tucker, Tucker's a fucked up dude, man. God damn. Prosecutors say it's probable Tucker had an accomplice. Mr. Pierce will get a drug deal, not bad. The criminal complaint doesn't mention that, nor does it give a motive. If convicted, Joseph Tucker could be locked up for the rest of his life. Do you understand the penalties to be challenged? Yes, ma'am. Now, in court, Tucker's attorney said Tucker had no prior criminal records, and the attorney reminded the court Tucker was presumed presumed innocent. Now, the court commissioner set bail at half a million dollars, and she ordered Tucker have no contact with the Brown family or the witnesses. Tucker is back in court next Thursday. The man who shot and killed someone over a disagreement about a haircut will spend the rest of his life in prison. Our Amelia Jones was at sentencing today. Amelia, the victim's family and friends did not go back here. Steph, Gabby, a family and friends of 21-year-old Andre Sandoval said he was a kind and giving person. They called Tamir Williams a cold-blooded murderer who should spend the rest of his life in prison. He took a life. Literally, so figuratively, we'll pay for all. They're all. After more than a year since 21-year-old Andre Sandoval was shot and killed, the man who pulled the trigger received his fate. The judge sentenced 35-year-old Tamir Williams to life in prison without extended supervision. The courtroom was packed with Sandoval. Why was the goddamn on Brito cutting your head anyway, son, man? I would. I don't know. I. I just don't. I wouldn't trust an umbrito to cut my hair, man. You gotta have like four C hair to cut. I wouldn't even trust a nigga with good hair to cut my hair, man. You gotta have like four C shit, man. Come on, man. Well, unless I don't know what the fuck happened here, but that's what appears to be the case. The Andre Sandoval was shot and killed. The man who pulled the trigger received his fate. The judge sentenced 35 year old. The chat is saying that the volume is low on the video. Extended supervision. The court room was packed with Sandoval's family and friends. Our main thing, our main purpose was not only to get justice for Andre, but it was to prevent this murderer from ever leaving prison and killing somebody else in cold blood. In August 2021, Sandoval got his hair cut by Williams. There was a disagreement, and Williams shot and killed Sandoval. On burritos, listen, man, as a son, man, I would never let an burrito cut my hair. But as a, a burrito, you should just never let a son, man, cut your hair. I mean, come on, man. Some men don't even know your hair texture, man. Why even do that shit, man? They need to adopt the Scott Adams method.
the, the Scott Adams method always works. It's it's the Scott Adams method is actually ninety nine percent good because you can always get hit with a by, with a straight bullet, but it's ninety nine point nine percent effective, man. And it works for all burritos too. Man. <laughs> it doesn't only work for gliders. It works for some people. It works for other some people. I can use the Scott Adams method, man. I don't know why this guy got his hair cut by a son, man. Maybe it was a walk-in barber shop where you walk in and one of the barbers be like, come here, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that was the case. But yeah, man, I don't know, man. I call blood. In August 2021, Sandoval got his hair cut by Williams. There was a disagreement, and Williams shot and killed Sandoval. The judge acknowledged Williams has a mental illness, but it did not, quote, relieve him from culpability of murder. When the trial began in December 2022, Williams pleaded guilty to first-degree intentional homicide and possession of a firearm when he was ordered by the court in a previous case not to have one. For the family, justice was served. It's going to take a minute to just process all of this, but right now all I can say is, we did it and we got justice for him and he's up there happy today sandoval's family and friends were were wearing red t-shirts that said lla live like andre i asked what that means and they said always be kind like he was live in racine amelia jones fox 6 news good reminder amelia thank you wow Golly, Basically, every single city in America with a substantial amount of sun people is in a state of crisis every single fucking day. Two men were gunned down in a car in Milwaukee back in October. One man died. Another is still fighting to recover. And as Fox 6's Bill Misson explains, the man's family has renewed hope. Bill? Gabrielle, a man appeared in court this week charged in that shooting that get that killed uh, D'Antoni Aubrey and seriously wounded Kiwan Scott. Now, Scott's father tells me it's given him hope that the case didn't go cold as his son works to recover. As the winter cold settled in, Anton Scott feared it would be a metaphor for justice with a lack of it in his son's case, that it would go cold as many do. It was very concerning that, you know, the person would just, would just have done whatever they did and go and do it and harm somebody else's family. I didn't want anybody else to go through the same pain that we're going through. It started on October 29th. Kiwan Scott was in a car with another man and a small girl. Video shows another man approach the car and then fire into it and run off. The car then drives. The little girl had no, like, that little girl being in that car is zero protection for you. <laughs> and that's a difference, like, and it's zero consideration either. Yeah, it's just like you would think like, oh, I would have, man, you lucky out. I'd have knocked your head off if that little girl wasn't in here. Oh, I, man, I'd have lit this motherfucker cup if that little girl wasn't. That literally means nothing to any son. I mean, across the board. You can't find one where that would mean anything to them. And we're not talking about blood feuds. We're talking about a look, a tweet, like shit like that, over shit like that. Drives off and crash. Anybody else to go through the same pain that we're going through. It started on October 29th. Kiwan Scott was in a car with another man and a small girl. Video shows another man approach the car and then fire into it and run off. The car then drives off and crashes. 23-year-old D'Antoni Aubrey died at the scene, and Scott was shot multiple times. He coded at least seven times. He's a very strong guy. When he came in this world, he was fighting. He's now in a rehab facility. So he's looking around and stuff, but he still hasn't spoken. But his father has renewed hope. I've reviewed the... So this is the case where the person survived. This is one of those cases where you're three people shot, um one dead or something like that and you think the other two people survived it's just like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, man they survived they all right nah man nah this is what it be like after you for the survivors man couple times he coded at least seven times 
He's a very strong guy. When he came in this world, he was fighting. He's now in a rehab facility. Oh, he's looking around and stuff, but he still hasn't spoken. But his father has renewed hope. I've reviewed the complaint. I find it establishes probable cause. 22-year-old Richard Lewis appeared in court Monday, charged in the case. Prosecutors say Lewis was on GPS monitoring at the time and cut off his They're bracelet no prior to... <laughs> These cases are almost like I, like they, they, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! Identical. <laughs> I got a question though. What? Hello. Go ahead, man. Uh, yeah, I, uh, this is just a question for the gliders. Uh. We normally kill each other 90% of the time, so I'm pretty sure the gliders are happy with the crime rate. That's how I feel. What, what if we did kill each other? Oh, yeah, we would have to kill somebody. Yeah, yeah, because we're killers, yeah. How do the gliders feel about that, though? There's two gliders on the panel. I just want to know. Or three. I want to know for Fisherman, too. He has a good end point, too. I don't understand what your question is. Well, no, aren't you happy that seven men kill each other? What if we didn't kill each other? Wouldn't that be a problem? How would that be a problem? Who do you think we'd be terrorizing? Oh, well, if you, I'm, if, are you saying like if you're not going to do it to each other, then you're going to do it to somebody else? Basically, yes. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. This is the best case. Smile you... every time a seven man dies. <laughs> I do. Yeah, every if if this is what you're gonna do, regardless of whether you do it to each other all day. I thought you meant like if we just stop committing crimes, wouldn't you be sad? Like, no. But so if you're gonna commit, DNA, if, if you're gonna commit crime, yeah, go ahead and do it to each other. That's better. Yeah, so that's that's why I don't know about white confusion. Though that's my grandfather told me too. Like, why do you care? Yo, are his teeth gold or is my computer fucked up? No, that's teeth gold. It's gold. Oh, the yeah. only reason that we do care is it spills out and affects us. Yeah, it will, and also we always like we we always tie them into it. And make sure you hit the PayPal Cash App Super Chat support the channel. Um, they, they we always ask them for money to fix the problem. We always blame them, either structural, institutional um, shit that they doing or slavery, legacy of slavery. We're always blaming them or begging them to fix it. So it's hard for them to stay detached from that situation, man. And but there are also... liberal gliders, though, too. Hmm? Only liberal gliders uh, say that. Say what? Liberal gliders. Say what? Uh, about uh, giving the money and all that good stuff, you know, because uh, conservative gliders don't give a shit. Well, ho ho hold, hold on. Hold on. Conservative gliders pay taxes. So if you well, pay no, taxes, uh, you they, pay, you they pay. do. No, that's just uh, state taxes and all that good stuff. They don't care about the programs as we like to. Right. But but a lot of a lot of conservative gliders. Like you just have to live in a multicultural society with some people. It's not like you're living alone. You're living literally with some people. You can't you can't get away from us, man. Think about it. That that town we just discussed in Memphis, where those gliders created Lakewood. I think that's the name of yeah, it. Yeah, like the in Memphis. Yeah, yeah. They created a little enclave. They got the fuck away from the some people in Memphis. And look what happened. Some people came out there and started hunting them. There's no, like, I mean, they can't get away. Only way gliders can get away from it is to have a Japan type situation where you're just a homogeneous. You're just yeah, a homogeneous. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way to get away from this stuff. He's now in a rehab facility. Oh, he's looking around and stuff, but he still hasn't spoken. But his father has renewed hope. 
I've reviewed the complaint. I find it established as probable cause. 22-year-old Richard Lewis appeared in court Monday, charged in the case. Prosecutors say Lewis was on GPS monitoring at the time and cut off his There's bracelet no prior to the shooting and 45 minutes later robbed a man at a gas station. Scott's father says he held off turning to crowdsourcing money for his son's medical bills out of pride. Those bills continue to grow. I Damn, a black dude got had too much pride to do a GoFundMe. Ain't that some shit? Salute to that man. Man at a gas station. Scott's father says he held off turning to crowdsourcing money for his son's medical bills out of pride. Those bills continue to grow. I want to do what's best for him. I need to be able to take care of his things. And not have to worry about it, to just focus on getting better. Now, the getaway driver is a suspect, but has not been charged in the case. Lewis is being held on $250,000 bond. He's due back in court next week for a preliminary hearing. Reporting in Milwaukee, Bill Miston, Fox 6 News. Bill, thank you. Wow. Um, what a dangerous fucking, <laughs> dangerous fucking city, man. Um, shit. Oh, we got a glider. A glider. Salute. Bail is set at $5,000 in the case of a shooting on the freeway earlier this week. Luis Hernandez Perez appeared in court for the first time. This happened yesterday. He's charged wah, wah, wah. in the shooting, which happened Wednesday on I-94 near the stadium interchange. Investigators say Hernandez Perez cut somebody off while changing lanes. It led to a few middle fingers, and then Hernandez Perez allegedly fired shots at another car. His bond is $5,000. It's essentially a road rage case. And um, it put the public uh, at large in very serious danger. And it's just something that's um, that we believe um, is, is a very serious situation and it has very serious uh, penalties. Quick correction, he was in court this morning. No one was injured. Hernandez Perez will be back in court later this month. Five thousand bucks, man. Bomb. Salute to that glad. I love all of that that umbrito. I love when people from other races benefit from all the criminal justice reform that was done on behalf of the Sun Man. In Wisconsin, it's cash bond. You have to come up with the whole amount. Oh, okay, okay. It's still only five thousand dollars, though. Yeah. Yeah. Domestic violence can impact anyone. That is the message coming from Common Council President Jose Perez tonight as he and his family mourns the loss of his niece. Madeline O'Neill is live in Glendale where loved ones paid her tribute at Clutch Park tonight. Well, there were a lot of tears. It was really emotional here at the park. Remembering Aaliyah Perez was shot and killed Sunday at just 26 years old. Her uncle and common council president is asking everyone to be proactive when it comes to domestic violence, to know the signs, hoping this doesn't happen to anyone else. On a gloomy day, it was a bright light. We're here to celebrate the brightest light of Aaliyah Marie Perez. That brought this crowd together. Beloved daughter, granddaughter, Niece, prima mana, sister, best friend. best friend. In life, Aaliyah Perez was a woman with many roles and names. Titi, as we all called her, Lily, Lola. In death, there aren't enough words to express the grief left behind. And this has been very difficult for us, but we want to thank you for being here. Let us all say amen. 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 And amen. Go in peace. Police say the suspected killer of Aaliyah Perez, Elijah Combs, shot and killed himself after a police pursuit. <laughs> God, no. it's like even when it's even when you the the, the, the on Brito that got his hand cut, he got killed by a son, man. <laughs> this guy <laughs> and this son Brito. It's like every time. Like this is the, the Scott Adams method. I mean, Scott Adams, man. Listen, man, maybe Scott Adams was just uh, um, used. God was using him, man. Like, don't worry, Scott. I get you on the back end, man. Like, I gave you a great life. You you, you fucking got paid millions of dollars to draw. Now you owe me one. <laughs> God was like, God was like, you owe me one, Scott. I made you a millionaire for doodling silly-ass fucking um, doodles and shit. Golly, man. Fucking every fucking time. This shit's sickening, man. If you're a son, man, in the chat, man, son people in the chat, th th 
is do you feel like every fucking time it's a sudden man even like uh, does that fucking sicken you does it make you feel like fucking disgusted hit one if you're disgusted by that son people hit one if you if you hit two if you're not hit two if you're not disgusted by that I'm just disgusted by this shit, man. Every fucking time. No matter. I wasn't expecting this one to be a fucking son, man, man. After a police pursuit Tuesday. <laughs> Aliyah Perez's uncle, Common Council President Jose Perez, blames domestic violence, urging everyone to be vigilant and aware of the signs. We are committed to the community as we feel this tragedy. We want to continue to help anyone in the same space so that this doesn't happen to anyone else. Tell your daughter no grow up to date some money. I got bad news for you. It's going to keep happening. <laughs> That's what she gets, so. She's dating. She's a, she's a thug, man. She, you look at his eyes. Third, well, the Bible says it's the Bible says no interracial dating, and people start doing it. You got to blame Martin Luther King for this situation. Yeah, give me another city, man. Is there anything like thug love, though? You know, it's is the there best. anything better? Nah, thug, um, thug love is um the best. It's like having an extra two inches of wiener. Living with you. And you know you miss my thug and my thug and my thug love. And I know you're getting bored. That was a hit too. <laughs> that started yeah. rolling Bobby Brown. Yeah. Yep. Thug love. I need a soldier. Here, Beyonce. I need a 